The September floods in Libya were a catastrophic event that exacerbated the country's already dire situation. Storm Daniel wreaked unprecedented devastation, overwhelming cities and exceeding the capacity of infrastructure, particularly dams. The heavy rains caused widespread flooding, displacing millions and killing tens of thousands. The disaster not only destroyed homes and livelihoods, but it also exacerbated Libya's public health crisis. The geographical vulnerability of certain cities surrounded by mountains was one of the critical factors contributing to the disaster's severity. The deluge submerged them, exacerbating the devastation and making rescue and relief efforts even more difficult. Despite the magnitude of the tragedy, the international response was noticeably muted and news coverage was disproportionately limited. The lack of attention hampered critical aid efforts and global awareness of the gravity of the situation, leaving Libya struggling to deal with the aftermath of both natural disasters and public health challenges. TR Media investigates disruptive frontiers and transformative initiatives around the world. Whether you're a new viewer or looking for insights into the ever-changing landscape of innovation and global impact, our content takes a deep dive into the most recent breakthroughs and their global transformative effects. The blame game has begun in the aftermath of the devastating floods that engulfed Derna, Libya, and completely destroyed the city. Nearly two months after the flood, Libyans have taken to the streets, venting their rage by torching ministers' homes. As tensions rise, the government's response, which includes the punishment of protesters, suggests a possible escalation. The situation appears to be out of control, raising concerns about unanticipated consequences, which could lead to a government overthrow similar to previous coups in Africa. Storm Daniel, which hit Libya on September 13, unleashed an unprecedented deluge, overwhelming the region's unprepared infrastructure and laying the groundwork for the ongoing post-flood crisis. This devastating weather event, dubbed the deadliest Mediterranean tropical cyclone in history, first hit Greece, Bulgaria, and Turkey before intensifying as it moved towards Libya, causing widespread flooding. Greece suffered damages totaling over 2 billion euros, while Libya suffered the failure of two dams near Durnat, resulting in the tragic loss of at least 4,433 lives, primarily in and around Derna, with tens of thousands missing. On September 9th, Osama Hamada, Prime Minister of the Government of National Stability in eastern Libya, declared a state of emergency, shutting down several oil ports for three days. Despite the fact that the ports reopened soon after, the collapse of the Derna and Mansour dams had disastrous consequences, with 30 million cubic meters of water submerging neighborhoods and causing widespread destruction. Prime Minister Hamada witnessed the sweeping destruction of neighborhoods, submerged vehicles, and collapsed bridges and compared the impact to a tsunami, emphasizing the gravity as a quarter of Derna appeared to vanish into the Mediterranean Sea. Despite a precautionary curfew imposed prior to the storm's arrival on September 10, which kept residents confined to their homes, the storm's catastrophic effects unfolded. Health Minister Othman Abdul Jalil revealed that 6,000 people are missing in Derna, with the city's mayor, Abdul Menem Al Gaithi, estimating that the final death toll will be between 18,000 and 20,000, accounting for up to a fifth of the city's population. Only three of Derna's ten districts were spared by the flooding, which rendered five of the city's seven entry points impassable and effectively divided the city after bridges along the Wadi Derna collapsed. Derna's 6,142 buildings were damaged, with 891 completely destroyed, 200 partially damaged, and 398 submerged in mud. The flood covered approximately 6 square kilometers, rendering the city's hospitals inoperable and overwhelming morgues, resulting in bodies being laid out in public places. Due to overcrowding, over 300 bodies were sent to Tobruk's morgue, and over 1,000 were interred in mass graves. Over 200 bodies were discovered up to 100 kilometers away by naval teams dispatched to recover bodies swept into the sea. The city's neglect over decades, exacerbated by conflict during Muammar Gaddafi's regime and subsequent instability after Gaddafi's overthrow, played a critical role in the magnitude of the disaster. The failure of dams built in the 1970s by the Yugoslav companies Hydrotenica and Hydroenergetica 
exacerbated the disaster. Derna's dams, which had previously been damaged in a 1986 storm and had reported cracks in 1998, had not been maintained since 2002, leaving them unprepared for the deluge. Despite allocated funds for maintenance in 2012 and 2013, neglect persisted, and a Turkish firm, Arsal Construction Company Limited, claimed to have been contracted for maintenance and a new dam in 2007, but the Civil War halted construction in 2011. Even in 2022, an Omar al mutter University researcher issued a warning about the impending flood risk, emphasizing the critical need for dam maintenance to avoid catastrophic consequences. The collapse of the Derna Dam unleashed a torrent that rushed 12 kilometers to the sea, overwhelming the already stressed Mansour Dam. Red Cross officials reported 7-meter-high waves and surges that resembled speeding cars racing over 30-meter-tall palm trees. Over 43,000 displaced residents faced profound trauma and a lack of humanitarian aid, with mental health crises escalating in reports of rising suicide rates. The urgent need for mental health support was highlighted by Talal Burners, Libya country director at International Medical Corp, who noted Libya's scarcity of trained psychologists as well as a cultural gap in mental health care. Suicides increased in the aftermath of the Derna floods due to the traumatic loss of family members, highlighting the critical need for psychosocial support. Recovery efforts remain sluggish and erratic, with critical aid lacking as winter approaches, leaving families in desperate need. Initially promised collaborative efforts among Libyan governments and volunteers have stalled due to volunteers leaving and political divisions impeding effective aid distribution. Derna and its surroundings, scared by political strife and prolonged conflict, remain isolated, limiting journalists and researchers' access to information about the region's ongoing challenges. Despite significant loss, Limited information access has limited public outcry or opportunities for mourning within Libya. Protests erupted in Derna in response to authorities' alleged negligence following the devastating floods. The United Nations issued a warning about potential disease outbreaks, exacerbating the crisis. Thousands gathered to protest the Eastern Libyan Parliament and Agila Sala, demanding the dissolution of the parliament an investigation into disaster accountability, UN presence in Derna, city reconstruction, compensation for affected residents, and an examination of previous budgets and the city council. The protest highlighted the conflict between survivors and those held accountable for the tragedy, which was caused in part by deteriorating infrastructure since Gaddafi's fall. Protesters set fire to former mayor Abdul Minam al gadis home, expressing dissatisfaction with a perceived lack of warnings and evacuation orders during the demonstration, which targeted officials including Angela Sala. Residents expressed dissatisfaction with the authorities' response, claiming inadequate warnings, which officials denied. Following a major flood in Derna, Eastern Libyan government minister Hisham Abu Chuwat suspended Gedi and launched an investigation by removing Derna's entire municipal council. Protesters gathered, calling for unity and demanding an investigation into the dam failures that claimed many lives. Taha Mifta slammed the government's crisis management, calling for an international investigation and UN-led reconstruction. The incident highlighted dam neglect escalating Libya's internal power struggles between Haftar-controlled Derna and Tripoli's recognized administration. Journalists were expelled after being accused of obstructing rescue efforts, as protests called for an impartial investigation and international-led reconstruction, capturing significant media attention. Meanwhile, the eastern Libyan government's Hicham Abu Chkuat defended the expulsion of journalists, citing their interference in rescue operations, which coincided with reports of police detaining local reporters. Derna, which is controlled by Haftar, operates independently of the administration in Tripoli, exacerbating Libya's political divisions. Despite prior warnings and scholarly papers, the city has been grappling with recovery efforts and body retrieval since 2007. Libya's turbulent state since Gaddafi's fall has seen the military-backed government take control, but has raised doubts about significant action beyond consolidating power. Amnesty International accused forces linked to Saddam Haftar of atrocities in a new fund, 
while concerns about accountability remained. This has fueled doubts about the government's ability to manage crisis, with many wondering if preventive measures could have mitigated the disaster or if its severity could have been mitigated. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.